in the comments of my apartment tour video, I read some of your stories about how hard it is to find affordable housing in NYC, let alone other cities. Someone even mentioned how it's like the Hunger Games, <laughs> which made me giggle, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's a little sad, can't lie. Hey everyone, it's Nikenji. Welcome to my channel. In my previous apartment tour video, I saw a lot of questions regarding what a housing lottery was, how I was able to get an apartment for $1,000, just so many questions. So today in this video, I'm going to be answering all of them and more. Of course, I'm going to be providing you with information about my experience as well as the application process and much more. So let's get into it. Now, what is a housing lottery? A housing lottery in New York City is a program that allows for New York City residents of a certain tax bracket to apply for affordable housing and or home ownership opportunities. Non-New York residents can apply, but the preference for these lotteries are given to New York City residents. So here's how it works. If any new development or existing building in NYC is a part of an affordable housing project, then they are required to designate 20% of their units to affordable housing applicants that earn up to 60% of the annual median income. The more real estate projects increase in New York City, the more lotteries become available. So long as you apply to a lottery that fits your income, you are eligible. So I would recommend to visit the Housing Connect website, which I have linked in the description bar below for your reference to find out more about those lotteries, to check them out. Also subscribe to their email so that they could notify you of new developments in the city and provide you with their income requirements as well. Now, are there any housing lotteries available in other states? That I'm not too sure, to be honest. I have heard of something in New Jersey. I'm sure you can like Google and find that out. There is a housing lottery program available there, but I'm not sure of other states. So I would recommend to do some research so you can find out what affordable housing opportunities are available in your state. The lotteries offered are located within all five boroughs and can range between average looking apartments to luxury apartments with amenities that come at a discounted monthly price. Also, the rent can vary between $0 for senior citizens a month to $3,000 and up for New York residents. Now, I have applied to 138 lotteries, okay? I just counted. That is near 14 pages of rejected or pending applications. I've been applying for the last two years. It's, it's been some time. I have also been selected as a potential winner for several apartments. So I like to say that I, I have quite a bit of experience with this whole process and I'll be sharing with you tips on how you can better your chances in winning your own in NYC. Number one, if you live in a single household and are okay with either a one bedroom or a studio apartment, you have a way, way higher chance of getting selected for an apartment. There are way more studios and one bedroom apartments than two bedroom or three bedroom apartments. So I'm just letting you know that. Number two, if you are okay with living in any borough, try to apply to as many lotteries as you can and also try not to be too picky. I understand that things like safety, the neighborhood, convenience, and like your commute to work should be your top priorities when it comes to your search. But I guarantee you, if you just open up your preferences just a bit, you have way higher chances of winning. <laughs> for me, I was in a very fortunate position. I work for myself. I don't have to worry about commuting. It was easier for me to just apply to wherever. That's what I did. I applied to so many different places. It didn't matter. I lived in Harlem majority of my life. I never saw myself living in places like Brooklyn or Queens but when I tell you I was ready to take the trip it didn't matter I was ready I even have friends who are applying to lottery apartments right now and one of them was saying I could I could never live in the Bronx Ugh. Oh, the Bronx? Like what? You will never catch me there. And I have another friend who was saying, I just want this particular place because it's in the perfect location and I just want to apply to this one place. And I'm, I'm like, guys, this is a lottery for affordable housing okay in new york city let's try to be a little a little more realistic here <laughs> just say number three make sure your application is filled out as accurately as possible make sure that you fit the income requirements because if you don't do this then you're more than likely to be overlooked by the system or rejected if anything also pay attention to the details on the actual listing page for the apartment as well on the left side you have some information about the apartment but then on the right side it's showing all of the different amenities that are offered for that apartment and if you scroll down there is a table this is the most important part you're able to see exactly where you fit 
in terms of your income and your household. If you scroll down a little bit more, you will see photos, possibly, sometimes they don't provide photos, but you'll also see a map showing exactly where it is. So definitely make sure you are reading it thoroughly so you don't miss anything. Number four, gather your documentation as early as possible. After submitting your application and waiting whatever amount of months or years for someone to reach out to you, basically you're gonna receive an email stating you have been invited to submit additional or official documentation to prove your income and prove your identification, things like that. There is a time limit when it comes to this, I think up to 10 days or something like that, or less than 10 days. They're pretty strict about this time limit. So if you do not have the documents together by this particular time, they will move on to the next person. So I would recommend to try your best to get all of the documents prepared as early as possible. So this whole process could move very seamlessly. I'll include a link in the description bar below of the list to all of the documents that they do require. Just know they are asking for almost everything. Some of these documents will include your tax returns, your last six months of your bank statements for all your bank statements, your investment accounts, things like that. They are thorough. Like if somebody were to send you $10 by Zelle or Cash App or whichever, if they see that in your bank account, they're going to create a spreadsheet with this transaction listed and they're going to ask you exactly why this transaction was made. Yeah, just, just, just be prepared. Please note if there are more than one person in the household, they will require documentation from every single one of these people. So it's a whole thing. And also for self-employed people, they may actually require even more documentation to prove your income, being that you are self-employed. For self-employed people, they do focus on the net income not gross. Now let's say you weren't able to gather your documents in time, like something happened in the process. The program does offer a period of time for you to appeal, okay? So during this time, I think it's up to 10 days, you can gather whatever documents you need or whatever they're requesting. I would try to avoid this because at the same time, they more than likely have already moved on to the next person. And now you possibly winning the lottery is contingent on the other person even wanting the lottery or not. I just think it's not worth it. I do know somebody that has appealed before in the past and they actually won the apartment. So I'm not saying it doesn't work, but I'm just saying try to avoid it. Number five, be careful of who you are putting on your application with you. This is for my roomies, flatmates. If you guys are not married or long time best friends, I'm talking years, do not put them on your application. I just say it's not worth it. Like let's say you have a, a friend and you guys are no longer friends anymore. Like something happened and it was done. And let's say at the time of the application, you added them on. Now, when you receive that email, hey, we invite you to submit documents for this place. Let's say you end up responding saying, hey, I want to remove this other person. They are more than likely going to reject you. And I say this because it happened to me. They prefer to deal with members of the household as it was originally stated in the original application. Unless you have some sort of legal documentation to justify the situation, a lot of the times they just move on to the next person. We want to avoid that at all costs. I will also add if you applied as a single person, it was only one person on the application, and let's say you wanted to add somebody later down the line, let's say they emailed you and you had a child that you needed to add, they will require some type of legal documentation to justify this change. If you are unable to provide that, then they won't allow you to add this person onto the application. Number six, sign up for emails, do not stop applying, and be patient. I know about five people that won the housing lottery, so that that gave me the motivation I needed to keep applying. For one person, it took like five years. For another person, it took two. For me, it took about two to three years. So it does take some time and I, I can't exactly say when, but I will share that in my previous apartment, when I was signing the lease and I knew what the rent was and I knew what the rent was going to be year after year, I knew I wouldn't be able to afford the place for over two years. So I was applying constantly, even at the start of my lease in 2021, in the nick of time before my two year lease lease was up, that's when I got the call for the apartment. And not only that, I qualified for three, three apartments <laughs> during that period of time, which was insane. So I'm telling you, prayers were answered. You never know what can happen. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So I say, just do it and just keep doing it until you really, really know you don't need it anymore. Just keep doing it. I 100% recommend that if you can increase your chances by doing some of the things that I mentioned earlier, I'm telling you, you have way higher chances, way 
higher chances. <laughs> now that I finished sharing my tips, here are some things to keep in mind regarding the housing lottery process that I want to make you aware of. Recertification. I have been told that in the past this wasn't a requirement, but now it is. All of the documentation that I mentioned that they require earlier in this video, they basically are going to require this from you every year. At the end of your lease or just once a year, they're going to email you, contact you for that information so that they can update their systems. At least that's what they tell me. They're, they're updating their systems with that information. If you end up making more money than the income requirement, uh, the initial income requirement, I've been told that that wouldn't affect your tenancy, but I wouldn't be surprised or I wouldn't put it past certain management that they may raise an eyebrow or two if your income raises. So I, I will say, should you acquire one of these apartments, I would definitely ask just in case. The process from receiving the email to providing the documentation to actually getting the apartment may vary depending on the development. For me, it took about three months to get my keys and that was because it had to go through a few channels and approval from those channels and then back around to me. For somebody else that I know, it took just over a month. So it all depends. If the management not only emails you, but also calls you asking for additional documentation, 98% of the time, you want the apartment. So get that documentation ready. So they do not give you an apartment viewing until after you submit those documents, which is quite disappointing because you are submitting all of this information about yourself and everything to quite possibly view a place that may not be livable. And that, that just doesn't make sense. On the site, not all of the properties have photos. So it can be very hard to picture where you're living. A lot of the time, they'll just have a photo of the building itself and possibly a photo of the amenities but these are all photos that you can find on the actual apartment complex's website and it's just not really giving you an accurate description of the actual apartment itself an example one of my friends she submitted all of her documentation and she went to go uh, view an apartment and apparently the bedroom was in the shape of a triangle which makes no sense. She was like, I can't possibly fit a bed in here. Like, how is this even, this is crazy. So yeah, sometimes I guess you may run into situations like that. I will say what I have done to help combat this setback is when it came to trying to look for photos of an apartment, a lot of the times in the title of the listing, the apartment number is listed. And also in the email that they send you, they provide the apartment number as well. So I'll end up Googling the floor plans for that apartment building. Of of course, you are not going to be able to find a floor plan for the affordable housing unit because that, that's not something that they really put out there and advertise, but you can always find a floor plan that might be above the apartment or below it. And that's kind of what I would go off of to help me get a visual of what it looks like. Unless you are not interested in a particular apartment, do not withdraw your application. Even if they possibly reject you, whichever, do not withdraw your application because I'm not sure of this 100%, but based off of my experience, experience, I believe they actually keep your applications for when new apartments become available. I'll give you an example. I was approved for four applications and two of them was for one building and the other two was for another building. So I remember for one specifically, I got a chance to view it, didn't like it, and I moved on to the next. But I would say a few months later, that same management reached out to me again, but for a different apartment. So I don't know. I am making the assumption that they probably kept me in their system and that's why they reached out to me when another apartment was made available. Keep that in mind as well. Not all lottery apartments are built the same, especially in luxury apartments. Because it's an affordable unit, you'll find that your apartment may look different from the 80% of units that are offered at the market rate, which, which makes sense. Things like the appliances may be average or below average. In my case, the flooring and and the appliances are definitely different from the other apartments. Some of the other apartments have really nice deluxe fridges and me, I have more of a standard fridge. Also the flooring is different, which is hilarious because when I first moved in here, I was ready to change the flooring. I actually heavily disliked this flooring, very much so. And I teamed up with a tiling company to send me tiling so I can cover this entire floor. I was ready to do that. But when I started decorating and everything, I started thinking, you know what? 
actually the flooring kind of complements the decor. So we're gonna keep the flooring and I ended up sending all the tiles back. <laughs> These are things to keep in mind as well that some of the apartments are going to look different. Not all developments are like this, but there is a huge chance that they basically treat the affordable housing a little differently than the other apartments. Now that is all I have for you today. If you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. If you are looking for more information about the lottery, again, I have placed links in the description bar below for your reference, uh, the Housing Connect website where you can apply to those lotteries. That's all there, as well as their FAQ page, which is pretty informative. Now, until next time, good luck and take care. Bye.